Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be um, trying to mount a 10 gigabit ethernet card up into this Synology rack station 1219 plus um, Synology does deliver or they supply network cards actually also with two times 10 gigabit ethernet ports or LAN connections um, they're rather expensive they are about $300 a piece and if you get them from the UK they're about 300 pounds a piece so um, and that's not the weight so but I have some cards that might work so we're gonna try that so I have some different cards here this is a Imulex this one is a Hewlett Packard card uh, but really it's an Intel card here is another Emulex card this one is a Broadcom um, yeah and these two are also Emulex card they are exactly like that one so more or less I have these two sorts this one is not gonna work but I have two different models that might work uh, but in the Synology NAS it, it has to be half height this bracket and I only have this bracket for this one so my best guess is that this is the best one to start with and I have been at their compatibility list and found that this might work they do support the OCE 11102 uh, then they have some numbers after them this one does not so um, that's why this might be um, not working but we're gonna try that one but let's go check the compatibility list for this so at the computer here if uh, you go for Synology compatibility uh, they have made this nice uh, page Synology product compatibility list okay so I have picked my Synology NAS here um, there is a lot of them there are multiple NASs here also some other stuff but but I had the RS1219 plus and the thing that we're gonna try and put in is a network card so there is a compatible other stuff hard drives m.2s USB devices UPS switches network cards is the one that we need and if we do that we get this list of course uh, Synology's own cards are up here um, they they both have one with one 10 gigabit connection and they have one with two and they actually have two different sorts so I of course started by checking those out uh, so I went um, here it is on eBay I might have lied a little bit it's only 246 pounds but then they want 55 pounds to ship it to me thank you very much that's from Australia that's uh, on the other side of the planet from here Amazon uh, US dollars here 300 US dollars uh, for that card there is also the M.2 adapter available but as I found out that uh, my unit will not do NVMe this really yeah that should just be to get another uh, two devices on it so yeah not gonna not gonna buy that's expensive to 184 dollars but back to the compatibility list list there we can see that there is Synology's own and then there is Emulex that we are messing with right now that's the card that I'm gonna be trying and they have a different they have three different Emulex cards and one of them has LC connectors that means that the SFPs are they're soldered in they can't be replaced then they have SFPs and they have another one with FSPs the one that we are going to be trying is that one uh, 111.02 and I am not sure about this NX because my card does not say NX it might also have some IBM firmware on there that might be totally incompatible we are going to try anyway the other card I have uh, which came out of a Hewlett Packard server is really the 710 down here so that might work as well so we have two iffy um, don't know if any of them will work 
Okay, so I asked the unit to shut down on the computer and by the time I got out here and pointed the camera at it, it's off. So that's pretty, pretty good. So because I'm gonna be uh, playing with this box a little bit before I put it into production, it's also mounted a little bit iffy here. So um, I am able to take it out. Um, at least that was the plan. You see that the network cable has been tangled up in the power connector. I need to fix that, but nevertheless, it's out. Can I fix that through here? Yes, there we are. Good, okay, so here we have the RS1219 Plus, out of the rack and it's not very deep it just have the hard drives and i have removed the screws uh, because i knew that i was going to be playing with this uh, expanding it a little bit i am also going to be putting in some more ram i just need to order that that is also kind of expensive especially considering that it's kind of old ram so we need a screwdriver here because um, the network card which we're gonna start with this one and see if we can get that up and running and it's gonna be sitting right there pretty neat actually but it's screwed in from the back of the box here so if we go around the back there is this thing here that we have to remove to do that I have never had this out so this is gonna be exciting to see what this does there try and save that uh, okay it's a kind of a protective thing here oh okay that way yeah I got it get it um, so let's now the bracket goes out let's zoom in on that okay there uh, so the bracket can go out and we can put in this very nice um, 10 gigabit ethernet card it actually um, the color the color theme with the system board is very nice that's uh, very sweet of them to think about something like that so um, yeah I see that uh, how are we gonna do that it seems that this card is a little bit That's not gonna work. That's too long. It doesn't fit in there. This is meant to go in a slot that is deeper. That's unfortunate. Hmm, never seen that. Never had that problem before. How about the other one here? That will do it. Except then the bracket is not gonna fit here. Okay, we're going to see if the bracket will fit on this card instead. Uh, I don't think so. But I don't know if you can see this, but when I put it in, it, it lines up at the front here, but there is too many legs down here to go into this PCI Express X8. I could remove the bottom of it, but I don't think I'm meant to do that. So uh, uh, that sucks. Okay, so this, um, well, it came out of a Hewlett Packard. It's a 562 SFP, but it should be the Intel, good thing that wasn't on, uh, Intel 710 something. And um, I was hoping to put on this bracket here, and it does kind of, it goes over there, but the holes is in a different place. And you could squeeze it in, but then you will be short-circuiting stuff down here. But it actually goes in the box, so that's a good thing. It fits, so we can test this. And I just need to either I can modify this bracket, or I can um, see if I have a bracket laying around for it, which is a better option. But it's kind of in, so uh, let's... Um, I'm just checking if anything could short circuit anywhere. I don't want that. No, I, I guess that's good. Let's just 
put the SFPs in. There, clickety click. I'm not sure that I'm gonna be using SFPs. I might uh, be using uh, duct cables in it instead. So let's put the cover back on and let's put it up in the rack. That goes in that way. Doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Okay. Power on. Let's go see if it pops up in the computer. I think we might have a problem up here. If you see the lights up here, it's just blinking. I turned this on 20 minutes, maybe even more uh, ago, and it hasn't come up. So it might not be compatible and the box just doesn't uh, run. So um, I think we'll try and shut it off and turn it back on, see if, if that does anything. I have tried to turn it off here, that's not gonna work. So... Just gonna unplug it and plug it back in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's probably just not compatible, but we're gonna give it another go. Okay, now it's blinking rather fast, so um, I'll give it another five, ten minutes and see if uh, what happens. Okay, the card is clearly not compatible. It's not working. It's not booting. It's just blinking. So we're gonna. Arr, take away the power cable and remove that card so unfortunately it looks like that I don't have a 10g network card that will work in this that's a shame um, so as soon as I plug this one in it doesn't boot so uh, it's not short circuiting anything mm. that's that's too bad uh, yeah, we'll have to um, look around for something else. Maybe uh, get something that we know will work. Oh, maybe we should see this. Just putting this uh, back on so that it doesn't get lost. So, yeah. And screws over there. And so I need to go searching for some compatible network cards for these. I was hoping that I had one, I guess I did not. So, a couple of cards that didn't work, it was too bad. I um, have to go investigate what else I have access to. So, yeah, I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna put the LED loosely on again. And we're gonna mess with this again soon. Uh, to see if we can get that up and running. There. Okay, as soon as I took the card out, it boots right up and I'm sure that I can go in and access the web interface now. So, and in the meantime, I, I put the brackets on these network cards again. Unfortunately, they clearly aren't compatible. This one, the PCI Express port was just too long. And this one, well, the thing just didn't boot with it in. So that's unfortunate. Um, we're gonna regroup here and we're gonna see if we can find some uh, cards that might be compatible with this I don't want to start taking a part service to, to try out other cards But yeah, let's see what I come up with. I might just go shopping so, Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye. Bye